I, I like to speak up and it's something I'm proud of where I come from. I'm always telling stories about my culture, my blackness. And um, when the Black Lives, when the whole Black Lives Matter thing happened, I, first of all, I was in shock. I have always been in shock in this, you know, with the racist thing because growing up in Uganda, it was never an issue. Like you didn't realize you're black, you're this, you're that. You knew that you're a person. And then coming to this country, you start to feel different and that's okay. It is okay to be different and it's okay to feel different. But it's when other people turn that into a negative and they make you feel like, oh, you don't belong because you're black or because you're a woman or because, and I had a lot of people reach out to me personally and they started to ask me questions, which I thought was a very positive experience because these are things that I would never come to you and say, oh, what do you, you know, I, you have a white privilege. You should use your white privilege to do blah, 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 blah. And when they're coming to me and asking me these questions, I feel empowered to educate them and say, listen, this is how you can use your, black, black, your, your white privilege to support black businesses or the black community or how to work with, um, with our community anyway. But it's still like, I think Viana said, you still feel like, is it something I should be saying? Should I say it? How will I be viewed? You know, am I gonna lose a certain credibility because I'm using the color thing? Is it okay to speak about it? And the other good thing that people were open to listen. They were open to hear, what are your experiences? What do you think we should do? I mean, I, I remember a colleague of mine that reached out to me, I'd worked with her lo like, so many years ago about seven years ago I'd worked with her and one time in the staff room we we had I called her out on something and she went all emotional and she started crying and I was thinking I've done nothing wrong like I've just called her out and because I wasn't all so emotional cry I wasn't the crying person everybody started to blame me and this girl reached out to me during that season to say, listen, I just realized that what I did at that time was wrong. Now that is amazing. That is small changes for people to start realizing that, okay, this is how I act or I perceive a black person to be. And I guess for me as, you know, I have kids as well. I have mixed race kids. It was very, very difficult for me to think okay, they already don't think they're white, they're black, they're this, and now this, how am I going to deal with it? You know, on a personal level, I had my own challenges, and then you're seen as a business leader in the community having to say something. I remember a journalist reaching out to me and asking me so many questions. And then, you know, somewhere in there, he said, oh, but so did you come to this country as a refugee? I've told you all the amazing things that my company is doing here in Scotland. And I, I called him out. I said, why does that matter? Why can you not think about all the good things that I have told you about our business, what we've done, what we're doing as black people? So it, it is quite challenging to think, should I speak on it? Should I say something? Should I go on social media and, and speak up? How will people view, view me? Am I using the race card, the black this, the black that? So it, it, is, it is still a bit of a challenge, but you know, at least people are more receptive to listening. 